What uh, what's going to be the biggest challenge for you guys this weekend? Three point line. Uh, you know, and they're playing with a ton of confidence, and they have uh, actually they have their whole team back healthy. Palmer came back, uh, and it showed the other night. I thought they played with a lot of enthusiasm and grit and toughness the other night, as well as execution. But yeah, anytime play Utah's three point line. How much do you, uh, of a chance do you get to watch games live? Did you watch Monday? I'm assuming you watch Monday's game. Live. I watch Mondays, yeah. But um, we, um, you know, we'll watch lots of games. Right. So sure. I think I watched four Utah games um, just in preparation for this game. But I've seen them play other times during the year. So, um, you know, in the end, I've seen enough to know that they're really good. Yeah. And with with when, when you watch a game like that, too, I think it like when I was watching it, the Pac-12 just, I mean, anyone can, I think everyone has a transitive win over everyone at this point of the Pac-12 already, seven games in. This is about as strong of a conference as you've seen. Well, it's the best conference in the country. For sure. Uh, and every metric, I think, shows that. Um, just in our case right now, the next seven games we play against ranked teams, three of whom are in the top 10. Um, and maybe Utah might move up there, I don't know, after last night's or uh, Monday night's win. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's real, you know, and I, I look at the remaining schedule that we have, albeit we have a lot of home games, which is nice. Um, we're playing somebody really, really good every weekend and most of the time, too. So, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, in our case, we just got to take one, one game at a time and do the best we can and, and really uh, just do whatever we can to, you know, to beat Utah. What did you learn from that Cal game with them chucking up 39 threes that you're going to uh, learn, use and implement against Utah, which is the best team in the conference in terms of efficiency and volume? Yeah, well, um, 10 for 39 is a percentage that you would take. The problem was we gave them too many second chance points. Um, our uh, uh, box score after that game is something I've never seen. They scored 66 points, 52 of which came off second chance points or points off turnovers. So you take those two areas out, they scored 14 points against us. So 10 for 39, I'd feel pretty good about that. But unfortunately, of those 29 misses, they got a good portion of them back and then made them count. A lot sure. of those, they ended up being three. So, yeah, the percentage was fine. And if they want to shoot that many, that's fine. But we just got to do a better job blocking out. Is there anything you're going to do specifically with Philly and with Kennedy? Just uh, They got a lot of three-point shooting bigs to be able to keep them from getting taken advantage of on the perimeter. Yeah. Well, we're not going to be able to chase them. So, you know, um, that negates our height size advantage. So uh, we're going to have to, you know, keep them around the basket and do the best we can on the with the perimeter players on their perimeter shooters. Uh, I think uh, Betts did a pretty nice job of challenging Peely inside, um, you know, which we can use to our advantage, I think. But the reality is we're, we're going to have to defend the perimeter and defend the three-point line. And and uh, they're going to make some. They're, maybe they're going to make a bunch of them. But we've got to make them shoot the same kind of percentage we made Cal. Yeah. And, and this time just limit them to one. You got your 600 win this year. Last weekend you got to see uh, Van Devere from Stanford tie the all-time wins record against you and then beat yeah. the all-time wins record the next game. How did that feel to be, should be a part? I mean, obviously, it's not the outcome you guys want. You guys want to go win that game, but how did it feel to be a part of history like that? Well, I'm glad we weren't the the record-setting game. that Nobody remembers uh, who was tied. And, and the honest truth is, it's going to come down to her and Gino, who's going to outlast the other, because they're, I think, within five wins of each other. So, uh, you know, her record could be broken, depending on how long she sticks around. But it was, you know, it's always an honor uh, and a privilege to, to coach against Tara. She's the best in the business, and um, she's a good friend. And, you know, I, I've, I've beaten her a good share. In fact, maybe as much, if not more, than anybody quite frankly, but she's beaten me a lot more. <laughs> you get to 1200 for a reason. So it also pales, you know, what I've done. You know, I, I haven't scored any points, gotten any rebounds. I've had great teams, uh, but she's doubled my total. I mean, that's incredible to think about, you know, and she's got more years left too, and they're going to continue to win. So um, I'm, I'm happy for, her. you know, I'm sad that we lost. But um, I'm happy for her. I, she's a good person, does it the right way, coaches with a lot of class, and her players play with class. Brought up rebounding there. Like the Arizona weekend, you guys were great 
in that regard, limiting them to one shot, had a significant advantage, held your own against Stanford, and then there's been games like UCLA and, and against Cal where it's fallen apart a little bit. In the games where it's going well, what's working, and the games where it's not, what's what's kind of the issue? Uh, I think focus a lot of times. And I think that like the Cal game, for instance, we just got way spread out. You know, we, we tried to... Yeah, that was that was on me. I don't think our game plan was what it should have been. And um, and, you know, so when you're really spread out defensively, there's a lot more room that you've got to cover. And we're not the quickest team. So if, um, you know, if we're spread out and our guards aren't getting a ton of those rebounds, we're in trouble. Uh, you know, because Philly and Kennedy aren't just going to be able to run down loose rebounds or long rebounds. And I think that was hap- is what happened. So we just got to do a better job keeping the defense tight and uh, and really focus on it, which I think is what we did everywhere else. It's yeah. not going to be a stretch. You got seven straight uh, games against ranked teams before you head to Seattle at the end of February. What, are you, what is your focus for this team? Well, that be? doesn't even include them. No, then the next weekend we've got st- – after that, Stanford and yeah, yeah. yeah. Good Do we play Washington the last weekend or Stanford? Stanford. Stanford's the last okay. Game. Didn't know that. I only know the next game, <laughs> and then somebody told me. I'm quoting somebody when they said the next seven games are against ranked teams. I have no idea what our schedule is beyond this this week. What is your focus for the team? Like, it's it's obviously going to be a tough stretch for this team. Yeah. Um, what are you, what are you going to help try to help them learn and accomplish during this stretch? You know, number one, to see this as an opportunity and a challenge. You know, we we can beat these teams. You know, now, obviously, we have to play really well. Okay, we have to play really well, but it's doable. And you know, so we just got to focus on what we can focus on, and then you know, one possession at a time, one game at a time. Uh, I, all I can do is uh, is hope that we continue to to improve, and we have been. We had a setback against Cal, but up until then, we had been improving. I think with each week, playing better basketball, cleaner basketball, doing the things um, that we need to at least put ourselves in a position to win, and then we took a step back, you know, and that's unfortunate. So now we have to, you know, dust ourselves off and, you know, and find a way this week. We, we're going to have to grind one out. Yeah, it's not, you know, listen, we're not going to be favored. I, we understand that. But we also have to believe that we can win. And uh, and I know I do. I do. I've been doing this long enough to know. I mean, I remember my first year here, we weren't very good at all. Those that were around would remember that. Senior night, we beat Stanford, crying out loud. Half our team was injured. They didn't even play. So things can happen. And uh, we just have to continue to believe and just do the best we can. Each game, you've seen uh, Peyton on the bench at games. Um, still fiery, still, yeah. you know. <laughs> what? How has her role kind of? It's obviously changed because she's not yeah. able to play. But how's she kind of been just in that, in that coach, almost coach role? Well, I think she wants to be a coach, so this is a great opportunity for her to learn what we go through as coaches. It's right. different when you're a player. Now, and you're you're sitting there watching. You going, you know, and I know she's pulling her hair out uh, from time to time. This could be her future <laughs> right here. Um, but she is fiery. She says the right things. She, she has the ear of a, a few of our important players, which is nice. Uh, I think it just goes to show how much we miss her. You know, she's exactly what we're missing. And uh, if we had her on the court, things would be different. But listen, injuries are part of the game. I get it. We've been playing the whole year without her. So we should have adjusted by now. But yeah, she's a tremendous help on the bench. And I think she's going to be a great coach. And she's really into it. And she knows the game. Has there been anything that she's seen or done that it, maybe you've learned from or, or picked them from that you like haven't seen? Yeah, I thought what she said the other night was uh, really appropriate after the game. Talked about how in the in the Cal game, we were living in, on possessions three or four possessions ago. Mm-hmm. You know, a turnover that affected us. You know, three possessions ago, and she said we have got to get back to just next play mentality. That one's gone. Can't do anything about it. And um, I thought it was really appropriate. And sometimes I forget that, you know, sometimes uh, they'll turn it over and then there's possession, possession, possession. And then we have a timeout and I'm saying something to that player about the turnover three possessions ago. So, yeah, I think we're, we're always learning. And that's what I really appreciate about Peyton. I think she's got a good head for it. 